Good morning. It's Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Let There Be. And our scriptures, Genesis chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 11. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And then Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. I can't remember when I first heard it, but the old sermon illustration about the creation in God's powerful hand has stuck in my mind for decades. It's all about an old-time country preacher attempting to tell his flock about what God did to bring about everything we can see. Having stood with Bible open to the first chapter of Genesis, he read the first two verses of Scripture and completed his sermon in three short sentences. This is what he said. In the beginning, there weren't nothing. And God, he reached out his hand and touched him a bit of that nothing. And with that bit of nothing, God made something. Everything. I fail to see how you can improve on that kind of preaching. There are certain scripture verses that stand out in my mind as formative for sound Christian doctrine of how and why God created the universe. These not only answer the darkness of our beginnings, but the purpose for why we exist. Colossians chapter 1 Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. And then John chapter 1. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. The debate on how the universe started and how it came to be the kind of place it is extends back generations, all of them. The debate began in the Garden of Eden when the serpent cast doubt in Eve's mind about whether God really said to leave the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil alone. That question got to Eve. She tried to defend God and said that the Lord had said to not even touch it. This was going beyond what God had told them. God told them that in the day they ate of that tree's fruit, they would die. With one simple question, Satan muddied the waters of God's clear teaching for humans on living a life of faith in God's way. We've been stirring that mud hole ever since. For Adam and Eve, and for every descendant of theirs, the whole issue has been one of faith. We humans have a hard time taking things on faith, believing what we've not seen. Yet with a God whom no living person has ever seen, this is the chief requirement, that we take God's word for our marching orders. And despite how small and insignificant each of us might appear, compared to, let's say, the universe, taking God's existence and sovereignty and plans for us on faith is, to put it softly, putting every egg we have in this faith basket. And therefore, we call it a leap of faith. Believing in God is a choice which he's given to us as one of those eggs in our basket. You either believe in, trust in, and rely on God, or you don't. The choice is entirely up to us. For you today, if you've never taken that faith leap, what you've been sensing as the missing piece in your life's puzzle is the assurance that there is God, 
and he's good and he loves you. That's what's on the other side of that nervous step of letting go and letting God. Today can be that one pivotal moment in your life. Trust in God. Choose to place your faith in God's only Son who died in your place. He created you and everything you can see and everything beyond your sight. Trust that He knows your every need. You'll find He's waiting for you with open arms. You chew on that as you hit the Rocky Road. Have a blessed day.